that can be the leg. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Chairpersons, for that very quick, crisp, and an AI-like uh, introduction so quickly for me. Ahmedabad is very well known to me. And Dr. Banshi Sabu has been a very regular visitor over here. Thanks, Dr. Banshi, once again for having me here. Myself, Dr. Mangesh Tiwaskar, are going to talk to you about advances of insulin. Why are we talking whatever the previous session you heard, whatever those previous three speakers said, what is more beyond? Dr. Thapkar gave an example of those who were here, those who joined late, about how the malt thing changes. This is exactly what both of us are going to do in this. So what's the clinical impact of evolving insulins, which are yet there already and some are yet to be launched very much in the near future? And is there a persisting lacunae in the adoption of these newer insulins or the existing ones? What are those? Let us look into a very practical way the burden which is in a mammoth pr proportion where in nearly by 2045 or so we will be hugely having a population which is diabetes. Of course at the moment in our country our population is going to be the youngest in the history of the world we are going to be called as the youngest in Hindustan because we will have most of the population by 2030 in the ages of between 20 to 50 years. That's one precise way why we should be talking about newer techniques, newer treatments and newer issues that would reduce or help the treatment for diabetes. When you talk about insulin, what is the most common thing that comes into your mind or your patient's mind when you're sitting to treat a patient? Why your patient doesn't agree for insulin? Can anybody tell me that? Fear of insulin, very good, superb. What is fear of insulin called in medical terminology? Anybody? Trypanophobia. And what happens after that? The patient feels that he or she should change the doctor and go out, right? What is the fear of doctors called in medical terms? Anybody? Iatrophobia. That's the word. So, people, those who have got anxiety issues, those who have got depressive issues, those who've got adjustment issues, mood disorders are more prone to have fear of insulin. This includes the doctors also, the medical fraternities also. Even as doctors, those who have inertia in initiating treatment of insulin also need to be balanced and that's why the feature of barriers between Barriers at the level of patient, barriers at the level of doctors, and barriers at the level of community or social, right? Right now, we have nearly 6 million people, those who are being managed, but remember, I'm going to show you next slide, where we say that even though when they are on insulin, they are not appropriately managed, except unless for around 45% or so, which is approximately 46.7. Now, which means the existing insulin either aren't used properly, A, or either not given in the correct dose or the patient is not taking it appropriately or they are just insufficient and we are having some unmet need that we need to add on with the existing insulin and that is where we talk about the needle phobia we said that's called trypanophobia the changes in lifestyle of course that's needed burdensome regimen from basal basal plus three times four times extra insulin myths and misconception Whatever the patient hears about insulin and thinks that once if I start, I will have to take it for the whole life. Now, this is not true. All of us as MBBS plus doctors understand that insulin is a at times need-based therapy, maybe most likely in acute stages or maybe initially in the acute emergencies or maybe in an in treated na treatment naive patient when the patient is presented with osmotic symptoms. Now, when the patient hears, even though when he's not having diabetes, for example, a family, a patient where he was, he was needing an insulin, came back home and he said that my friend said we should not take insulin because of so and so reason. This is called as hearsay complication or this is called as listening to somebody by a hearsay miscommunication or a misconception or myth. This is the biggest health literacy in India that we face as doctors daily, day in and day out. Next is psychological. I did tell you some components of it. 
adverse effects of insulin therapy we know lipoatrophy lipohypertrophy hypoglycemia is not an adverse effect hypoglycemia is a part of the treatment wrong treatment wrong regimen wrong dose is different but with the wrong type of food with the wrong type of lifestyle and with something that the patient is not been able to adjust also can cause hypoglycemia and remember also hypoglycemia is one of the commonest emergency in endocrine and diabetology so it is not to be taken as a fear it is the patient is to be empowered and the commonest drug that we should use to treat hypoglycemia is anybody in a conscious patient glucose powder glucon d powder super then comes most of us are busy because doctor per population are very few so lack of time per patient of course when you initiate when you adjust when you intensify the insulin you need to spend time the patient expects that you talk to them a little more the relative expects acha doctor anything else that we should be aware of now this is a pandora's box you don't know what's in their mind you need to literally make them sit again and talk to them concern of non compliance which is running in the doctor's mind the most important non compliance is he will leave me and go to other doctor but beyond that what if he or she takes little extra dose what if he or she takes little lesser dose what if she or he doesn't take the dose at all what if they take the insulin then do not monitor all these things very important doctor and patient related barrier and need to be addressed in each and every patient because we are moving to an era of smart and smarter insulins from basal and evolving landscape so let's let dive a little deep into why is it that we say that the basal insulin alone may be the most convenient initial insulin that was given by this year's ADA 2024 also so the current basal insulins you've seen this slide with earlier speakers that's how they work from od some insulins with bd doses but however i think we are looking when we talk about advances we're looking at once a day and towards the end i'll talk to you about once a week insulin which could be given and then we take it as what is this basal versus long acting versus the weekly insulin so what are those things that we need to know before we harp upon those slides of advanced insulins one is what exactly we mean by a true once daily insulin two what is that higher variability of insulin pkpds does it really have to be peakless or we need a peakless insulin fixed dosing time do we need to give it that way and of course the most important thing the million dollar question will i die in the sleep or what would happen if i get sweating in the sleep i sleep alone i am alone my children don't stay with me my grandparents children stay with me i am the only eldest in the family i am the only breadwinner of the family what would happen all these deficiencies when we answer one with the ease of administration two with the ease of adjustment of dose three with a better equipment or the pen that we use four with avoidance or minimizing the nocturnal hypoglycemia all these points together answer our question of is it really the time to upgrade with these molecules is it really the time to sustain these molecules that longer in terms of our patient armamentarium when we look at such a big carbocentric country when we look at such a carbophagic people that we love so much food which is not wrong of course i still see diwali is next month but there is a diwali already the food counters outside the hall in this hotel itself so i think that's the spirit that we drive upon so let us treat also it is not wrong to treat with food but treat with the right regimen that he or she may have what about this i'm going to leave this slide as it is because my next speaker dr mangesh tiwari is going to talk to us in details about two studies one was with versus glargin u100 how about its action variability efficacy and safety here we talking about don't just talk about improvement about what we are talking we we with this an innovation there was a question about u glargin 300 uh, just now before this session and that also will be taken in detail i'm setting a background for my next speaker regarding this now what's important what, where have we come in this landscape we're talking about that 
We could use this in elderly patients because it's giving a benefit of avoiding nocturnal hypoglycemia. We're talking about renal and hepatic impairment that can be prevented. We're talking about giving it in all adults. The first question that usually comes is, can we give it to pregnant adults? That you think can be used and is approved. And also, if you see very, very categorically, it can be used in people, in patients, in our children with type 1 diabetes, those who are more than 12 months age. Here the child, if he or she is having uh, type 1 diabetes, the moment you cut the first birthday cake, she, he or she is eligible for this long-acting basal insulin and that's where we got to the kind of the importance in their life that yes there are insulins my dear child which could protect them. Degludec, why it is an ideal basal once a day insulin because it has got minimal variability, long duration of action more than 24 hours allowing the dosing flexibility. It is flat in profile, it is peakless activity profile minimizing the risk of hypoglycemic events. So it doesn't have peak like the monotard and the insulatards that we used earlier. Despite the breakthrough in insulin, there is some unmet need which lingers around. And what are these? The fear of needle is still there as we discuss about. That's the reason. Can anybody tell me, has any one of you taken insulin any time? A demo pen maybe on your body with a normal saline. Superb. I have one hand, two, three, four. Did it pain you? Yes, yeah, this row, no, middle row, no. Dr. Pivaskar, sir, you want to say, it did it pain you? No. Now, how many of you have got bitten by a mosquito? Macharan to kata hoga, wo bana nahi hoga, aap uske baad kuchu alag baat hai. A lot of hands mosquito. The pain of mosquito bite is perceivable. There is no pain with insulin injection, especially when given with a pen, especially when given with a novel pen, and especially when given with a flex touch type of a pen. The needles are so fine that it doesn't. So we say that machar karta hai, dard hota hai, lekin ye wala insulin se dard nahi hota. And if the patient perceives pain, that is the burden slide what I showed you earlier. It means that there is something really psychologically the patient is currently having some issues and we need to address them. Do not think that it will be per se whatever. Please talk to this patient, show them the demo pen, show them how you could, they could use. The best way to use insulin is to give the first shot of the insulin in front of you. If not in front of you, just outside your clinic with your diabetes educator in your dietitian's group or whichever room. Or if not, send the patient back to your family practitioner, maybe he or she can give. You should have some family practitioners with you when you're starting the patient on insulin. So fear of needle, delayed insulin initiation, unmet need, and third was the daily prick that we were talking about how we could avoid using it. Also, identifying more or higher frequency of insulin injection as a burden is seen by all patients and all doctors, including most of us, the KOLs also, and that's why we talk about how do you evolve this landscape and that's why the topic again we revisit. Daily taking the insulin is a challenge. How many of you are taking OHAs for diabetes? Superb, nobody got diabetes? Okay, I see some hesitation. Superb, you're a superman. How many of you are on statin? Superb, I think, yeah, I really love my chairpersons. They are, I think those who are at least 45 plus, that's one of your major cardiovascular risk factors. There is a pain in taking some kind of tablet. Right? And which is needed. We ourselves, as a, as a doctor in super specialist department, as a doctor in a tertiary care center in Mumbai, we see daily some or the other doctor who's come to us and talks to us about that. I'm not able to continue it regularly for a longer time. And that's why nearly 60% of doctors versus 55% of HCPs also reports the difficulties of how they would take it from there and how they feel that they should be addressed in their daily needs. 65% of the patients are non-adherent. And consequences, of course, we discussed initially that lipoatrophy, lipohypertrophy, and that's why the insulin technique has to be revisited nearly in each appointment that how are you taking insulin 
and the solution towards better glycemic control with less frequent dosing. And here we talk about again that the future is bright and we say that the once weekly insulin Icotec would be very soon launched in our country and not just once weekly insulin. Whatever you heard from the previous panel, we also going to have Icosema once weekly very soon. So I think that's where I would like to stop over here and give it over back to organizers. Thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for that patient hearing. Thank you.